Hello and welcome to Candice Crafts online shop. Today we'll be doing some basic techniques in tea bag folding and we'll also be looking at the range of resources available to you on this website which can help you in this regard. Some people have said to me why is it called tea bag folding? You don't use tea bags. So why is it called that? Well I've heard several stories but the one I prefer is that in times of old, when tea was a very expensive commodity, it came in very highly patterned little packets about that size. And the lady of the household, not wanting to waste anything, would make little things out of the papers and send them as gifts to her friends. Of course, it also served to show how rich she was. In many ways, tea bag folding is very similar to origami. And anybody who's familiar with origami will know that it's very important to start off with a perfect square. So it's very important to cut out your squares perfectly. I'll be doing that with you in a moment. On the Candice Crafts card making shop, specifically the tea bag folding pages, there are many resources for tea bag folding. For instance, I've designed sets where you have the same design paper at four different sizes. Here we've got 60mm squares, 45mm squares, 30mm and 20mm so that you've got the option of making your finished shapes at a range of sizes. I recommend if you print these out that the two larger ones you print them out at, on 140 gram paper and the two smaller ones at, on 100 gram paper. That's because as the folds get smaller it avoids the, the folds becoming too bulky on a thicker paper. Also on the site are sets of five designs which complement each other. Here's a set of the Christmas papers. There are four sets of Christmas papers, four of blues, four of greens, etc. So there's plenty to choose from. The sets of papers such as this are only available in the 45mm size which are perfect for card making. Also on the website is a page of instruction sheets. Here are a couple of examples. And these are the first two basic folds I'll be doing with you today. If you've never done tea bag folding before, there's some basic equipment that you'll need to acquire. One of the first things you'll need is a self-healing cutting mat such as this one. This is the A3 plus size, but you can get them much smaller or much bigger. This is a size I prefer to work with. You'll also need a metal ruler. Now, if you're cutting out squares such as these, tea bag squares, if you're using a, a plastic ruler and a craft knife, the chances are you'll cut yourself because the blade will cut into the ruler and you'll end up with missing finger ends. That's why I recommend a metal ruler. Some of the metal rulers come already with a non-slip piece of rubber or such like on the back. They're very helpful, but this one is aluminium and is therefore softer metal than your steel blades and you can still have the same problem sometimes as with the plastic ruler. Therefore I recommend a steel ruler such as this and here I've just put some masking tape on the back to act as a non-slip device. You'll also need a craft knife of some description. I prefer to use a scalpel. This is a Swan Morton number no. 3 handle with a 10A blade which is changeable like this. I prefer to use this just because I'm used to it. You don't have to use one of these. You may also need a small pair of scissors. Nail scissors will do. You don't need to spend a lot of money buying proper craft scissors. Because we're working on very small pieces of paper, you'll also need some way of applying glue in very small amounts. You can get glue pens such as this one available online everywhere. But I prefer this glue applicator, which was designed for quilling. It has a very fine nozzle and you use a pin to keep the air from getting to the glue when you're not using it. These are available from several websites online and you just fill it up with PVA glue, add a little water to help it get through that fine nozzle. Once you've got your finished shapes cut out, you might not want to start folding straight away. For instance, I prefer to do a lot of cutting all at the same time and then store the shapes later for later use. I've found one of the best ways of storing your, your squares are these handy sheets which are punched to 
to go into a ring binder. Now these were designed for 35mm film slides and in this case they're just the perfect size for your 45mm squares. These were medium format slide holders and these are perfect for your 60mm squares. I find these two sizes are the ones you'll most often use in your card making. Sheets like these by the way can be found on photographic suppliers websites. Now I'm going to show you how to accurately cut the squares. You'll notice that there are, there are marks on the paper to guide you but you must make sure that these are lined up accurately. Here I'm lining up the ruler on the marks but notice I won't be cutting all the way from the top of the paper to the bottom but only starting part way down as long as I've gone past the edge of the pattern like this. Hold the ruler firmly and make sure you've got a very sharp blade because if your blade is blunt it will drag the paper rather than cut it. Again line up very carefully and don't cut all the way down the paper because this is the effect you want. Again line it up Make sure you put, apply enough pressure to the ruler so that it doesn't slip. And again, at the end. Now, you notice it won't move because I haven't cut all the way through the paper. Turn it around and cut in the other direction. This time it doesn't matter if you cut all the way. Again, make sure you line up the ruler very carefully and apply pressure all the way across. And as you finish, you'll get the squares coming out. Very important that you've cut accurately so that you don't get part of the next squares pattern on that square. You can always trim them later with the scissors, but it saves you a lot of hassle this way. Now you'll notice, because I didn't cut all the way through the paper, I've got a nice square piece of waste. And I've got all my lovely squares there. This is the peacock diagonal pattern and we'll be using that for one of the first basic folds. Right, here we have the squares that we cut out previously. Here I'm using the 60mm square to help you to see the folds better. But obviously the same folds work on any size of paper. The first one I'm going to do is the basic triangle. Start with the pattern side down and take your paper from corner to corner. Try and make it as accurate as possible and make the folds as tight and as sharp as possible. I'm using the backs of my fingernails, they're very handy, I don't have to lose them. Some people prefer to use a bone folder but that makes it a little bit fiddly if you've got to keep picking up another tool to every time you make a fold. So just look after your fingernails. Right, as you notice I've gone in both directions and then opened the paper back out. Now I'm turning it over, and this time I'm folding from side to side. Again, as accurate as you can. Open it out, go back again the other way. This time, Pop up the centre, get hold of two of the corners and push and you'll soon see it fall naturally into a triangle. Now because this is a non-symmetrical patterned paper, in other words it's not the same all the way around, you'll have to decide for yourself which side out you want the paper. So just have a little look at each one and see which one you're most happy with. I like that one best. So the next thing I need to do is do an identical one. So again, to reiterate, pattern side down, corner to corner. Open it out, corner to corner. Turn it over, side to side. And again. Then when I push it into the triangle, 
I need to make sure I've got the same piece outwards as the first one. Now you see how to lock these things together is you tuck one in underneath the other. Now as you see that's going to create a problem for me because I want to see that piece of the pattern. So underneath there is no good so I just swap it around and tuck it the other way. Always keep the apex towards you and the open shapes away from you. When you're totally happy that that's going to make a nice pattern, get your glue and here I'm using watered down PVA glue in the fine tip applicator. Just give it a little shake to make sure it hasn't settled out. Again, offer up your piece and this time I'm going to put the glue inside there. Put a bit of glue on there, push in the shape, make sure the corners line up and make sure that that fold goes right into the centre. Just hold it together for a couple of seconds and then set it on one side. That will give time for the glue to set. While that glue is setting, you can be making another pair, like one I prepared earlier. Once you've got two pairs, like these, carry on slotting them around and you'll soon see the shape to build, building up. If I now apply glue in there, and glue that. I've got a set of four. If I add another two to another pair, I'll have two sets of four. There. Just give them a little time, especially if the folds aren't quite tight. Now I'm taking one of the sets of four and I'm going to glue it to the other one. Again, tucking the same side in as before. Give that a moment to set before you attempt to fasten the last one. So to reiterate, just decide which part of the pattern you want outermost and try it first before applying the glue and always make it in pairs to give the time for the glue to go off. This time I'm going to show you the basic square fold. So here I'm using a different pattern. This time we'll do everything the same as before but the opposite way around. So with the pattern side down, we go side to side first of all. Again, make your folds nice and neat and crisp. And then turn it over and this time it's corner to corner. And again. So you'll notice now when you push the shape in, it'll make a square. Again, like with the triangle fold, it's up to you to decide which part of the pattern you leave out the most. Here's one I prepared earlier, and I've decided to leave this purple shape out the most. So first of all, I identify it, and then lock it in the same way as with the triangle fold. So either under or over. In this case, I'm going that way. I've already prepared two sets of four, so again working in pairs, here's my other set of four and again I'm gluing on one side, in this case that side. Apply the glue, lock the shape underneath and press down and allow to set fully before attempting the last piece. Give it a little while. Then apply the glue under the last flap and interlock. 
you may find that in some of these shapes you've got a bit of a hole in the middle. That will largely depend on the thickness of the paper. If you don't like that look, you can always add a jewel or a bead in the centre of your card. Now I'm going to show you a really simple fold. You won't find the instruction sheet for this on the website because it's so simple you just have to pay attention now. Here I'm using this Celtic Knot patterned paper and this is the 45mm size. I'm not using the 60mm for a very good reason which you'll see later because with this shape you get a larger shape to, to finish with. Right, with this fold it's very important because of the pattern on this square that I start with the same corner out every time. So this time I'm going to take this corner, so keep the dark red part to the left, turn it over and do it corner to corner. So that means that in this point I've got the dark red part of the knot. Move it around, take the palest corner and push it up to that adjacent corner. Crease it down well. That's it. That's as simple as it gets. But we're going to do something really tricky to make it look that bit nicer when it's finished. Now you'll see when it comes together how much nicer. I'm going to take some scissors. Now I'm going to snip around the darkest part of the knot like this just to get rid of the green background. Now I'm going to cut around the lightest part as well just to get rid of that unwanted background. Again. Now when we put these together there's a really neat trick to getting them really accurate. On the website you'll see these sheets. This is a positioning grid which I've developed to help me get things really accurate and you'll notice there are four on one side and four on the other or if it's a download it'll be a two sheet set. Now I've decided that this works best, this particular pattern works best with 12 so look at the 12 grid. I'll take my first shape and I'll lay it onto the grid and take your first piece align it exactly so that one edge is along one line and one edge is along the other like that so sitting into the corner your next piece wants to be sitting where that piece is there along this line so take that piece lift this up put that inside along that edge and slide it along that line until it until it butts up into that corner there so that those two pieces can't go any further. If you align every one exactly on the grid you'll get a really nice finished shape in the end but again like with all the other tea bag shapes do it a pair at a time. So again I've got my glue so make a mental note of how far across the pattern goes so you know where to put the glue. So I'm going to put it on this corner here. That's my glue. Make sure it's lined up on the grid. Make sure the next one comes in at that angle and just press it down until it's set and fasten it down. Build up my, my segment in pairs. In this case I need to finish up with two sets of six and then I'll put them together to make the finished shape. So as you can see with two shapes if I align this side on one segment line this fold now aligns not on this one because we've got now got two it aligns on there. So we take our other pair jump two segments to align this piece into there. So again glue it, push it up the line until it meets in the middle and you can see the pattern starting to build. Now because 
with this fold, which I'm calling the pinwheel, we ideally need two halves, so I need two sixes, because I'm working with 12. So again, I'll put that on the grid, glue it, put that piece in, push it into the corner and hold it down. Set it aside while you finish the other half. Glue it. Push it into the corner and hold it down. And just give it a moment to go off before you try the next step. Now, because I've got two halves, I have to slot these in more or less simultaneously. But there's a little bit of a trick. You can slot them in, but just glue one at a time. So I'm going to glue this piece and let it go off slightly before I glue the other. But I need to slot that in first. So you can largely do this by eye from now on because you've got the same point of reference on the pattern. So I'll put a bit of glue under there, show you what I mean. So I'll push that in, but then push it around the shape until it makes the same angle as all the others. So we're meeting at that point on the knot and hold it until it goes off. Now you'll notice that this side is too wide. This will become apparent in a minute what happens. Just let that glue a minute. Now, I'm just gonna let that go off a minute. If I now take this across to the point at which it matches, you'll notice that if you lay it flat on the table, the middle pops up. That's exactly what we want because it gives a much more three-dimensional effect. So I'm going to pop the glue in there and then push it round till it meets and let it jump up. So push it down and then the whole piece, when that's gone off, will become three dimensional and the middle pops up. And on that pattern, it looks a bit like a water lily. So here's my finished shape now popped up in the middle and you can see now how effective doing that bit of cutting gives the finished shape. Here's another one that I did the other day. And here's one where I folded the paper the other way out with the dark in the centre and the light in the out outer. And it gives a completely different effect with all the same work. ideal if you use the grids. Once you've completed your tea bag folded shape, you'll be applying it to a card and this is where a lot of the creativity comes in, but you might be helped by some of the resources on the website. Here for instance is the simple square fold with the matching background paper and also the matching insert for the inside of the card. I've also added a small sentiment panel these are also available on the website. Here's another example of the basic square fold. And here are a couple of examples of the triangle fold. There are very many permutations, as many as you can possibly hope to wish for.